on the green, white, or Bant Harden scales. Bant, remember, that's a splash with a four of Stubborn Denial in the main. He actually has a couple extra blue going on in the deck. He's playing four copies of Skyrider Elf. That's the uh, flying creature with Converge. He also can power up his Woodland Wanderer with that blue mana. Yeah, he also has one copy of Cinder Glade in the deck, which you can find off of various fetch lands, and that's for the exact same reason. All right, well, the match starts out. We have Osip on the draw. First creature will still be his, though. It's Zergo Bell Strikers. We go back to Nicholas. His turn to play will be the aforementioned Sky Rider Elf. So that, thanks to Yav... Thanks to a, yeah, thanks to Yav Coast is going to be a 2-2 flyer playing green and blue for it. Now that creature is interesting. It's a, it's a scalable Skyreach Manta in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that card, except you need to have blue and green up front, but uh, green has flying, or blue has flying rather, and green has large creatures, so it makes sense as a blue-green design. All right, we'll swing in from Osip with the Zergo Bell Striker. We'll see kind of how Nicholas, whether he wants to trade and go big or whether he wants to race. Uh, he declined the trade here, actually, so it went down to 17. And it looks like he wants to go ahead and race in the air against Osip Stacks. That's, that's definitely a statement against Red. Well, he, uh, uh, Fiorentino, also has Dromokus Command in hand, so it's important for him to get to untap with a creature. Uh, these green-white decks, sometimes they need to take a hit on the jaw to be able to untap with a creature in play, and then cards like Trabocus Command become a lot more powerful. Well, it looks like it'll be good on this board for sure. Osep's second turn play was a copy of Dragon Fodder, so three creatures now on his side of the board. Nicholas fetching for a basic planes. We'll see whether or not Trabocus Command comes out immediately. See, it looks like he has another Skyreach Elf, a Dromokus Command, a Stubborn Denial in hand, so he may also just be able to go for a 3-3. We see here, the swing was for two, put Osip down to 18. No play just yet. So Nicholas holding up the pair of instants back on Osip's turn. Now, attacking here is a little bit risky for Fiorentino. If he hangs back on defense with Stumber Denial and Dromokus Command, it's hard for Osip to make much inroads here unless he's willing to take a pretty big risk or his hand is just loaded with a lot of wild slashes and fiery impulses. As it stands, the coast is clear for Osip to just attack and cast whatever spells he thinks is appropriate. Right, so if the elf was on, on blocks, for example, it could block a goblin token, fight a goblin token, have Stubborn Denial up, that'd be pretty safe. But with no blockers, Osip's Pretty much just going to swing here. Yep. See Dramoka's command from Nicholas. Looks like it's going to put a counter on Elf. The Elf will fight down Zergo Bell Striker. Now Osip's allowed to attack. So it's just two goblins to swing in. Fiorentino down to 14. And he's going to go for a follow-up Hordling Outburst, but this is a stubborn denial from Nicholas. That'll keep him off the turn three play. Osip just going to get to have two goblins at the end of the turn. Great turn there for Fiorentino. Just swung the race very dramatically there able to answer one of Osip's threats, leaving him with not a whole lot in play and swallow up his whole turn there with Stubborn Denial. Yeah, and that was so important for Nicholas because he didn't have Ferocious on the Stubborn Denial trigger. So that was just pay one extra for a non-creature spell. Now, fortunately, Osip taps out for a three mana sorcery there. So the Stubborn Denial is live. Yep. Just how you draw it up. And yeah, that's actually the only I mean, with that three man, I think that's the only spell that oh, that really that the denial could have snagged there. Yep. But that it did. So, despite the fact that he is down on life points right now, twelve to eighteen, Nicholas is ahead on the board. It's going to be Woodland Wanderer, and this guy is a big one. Green, white, and blue all paid for it. It's a five-five Vigilance Trample. So there's a lot of criticisms you can you can make for Woodland Wanderer. It's just numbers, and it doesn't line up very well against most removal spells in the format. But against decks like Atarka Red, it's so big, and Vigilance and Trample is a great combination of keywords to be able to yeah, it attack and still hang back on D. Yeah, I mean, vigil yeah, you get a defender every time it attacks. Trample's amazing against the support of X1s. We see Osip's going to play Abbot of Carol Keep. Although one of the strengths of a Tark Red is the ability to go wide in spots like this and still execute Become Immense plus Team of Battle Rage for some kills. So uh, things are going well here for Fiorentino, and a lot of Lebedovich's creatures are worth very little at this point. But uh, the Hardened Scales deck is not out of the woods by any stretch. Yeah, I mean... this. We do see this a lot with Atarka Red, where, as you mentioned, okay, the uh, other creature deck gets one or two creatures in play, so now he's looking to go wide. But, I mean, life totals are still very even here. And at 12, it, it doesn't take too many pump spells for Osip to kind of chip shot his way to the last points of damage. Exactly. Fiery Impulse will go ahead and take care of Skyrider Elf. 
We do count instants in the yard. There are certain. There is a dragon fodder and an outburst on Osip's side, so it'll be three. That's enough to take care of the flyer. And Osip replaced Zergo Bell Striker. So Fiorentino this turn drew another copy of Subdenial, which is pretty much perfect. Now he has a lot of protection against some sort of combo kill from Levadovich's side, and this game feels like that's what Osip needs to do to win at this point because just right. attacking with creatures with the life tolls the way they are, it's not going to be enough to get the job done. Osip is going to have to combo out. All right, well, it's a Skyrider Elf again from Fiorentino. It's 3-3 three, three, thanks to that prairie stream that he has in play for the blue mana. He's leaving up blue off Yabamayakos, though, for the Stubborn Denial, as you mentioned. And now that he has Woodland Wander, that is ferocious. This is just going to negate for one. So you're right, so any sort of Become Amends, Team or Battle Rage, Atarka's Command, what have you, those sort of late game closing cards from Osip, he's going to need two copies, one to get around the counter spell. And since it has to most likely involve Become Amends and Fiorentino has a Stubborn Denial, now Levadovich needs two copies of Become Amends, and it's hard to cast two. First yeah. one's very easy to cast, second one a lot more challenging. Yeah. Can he get there maybe with something like uh, an Atarka's Command if he gets enough creatures out here? Well, it is worth a lot of damage. Uh, it's three up front, plus one for each unblocked, plus whatever the power is on the creature. So Targa's Command is also potentially an out here. Well, it looks like Osip's going to go for a kill here, or a lot of damage. He's dashing Lightning Berserker, fetching right now. Now, the last card in Osip's hand is Teamer Battle Rage. So he doesn't actually have the Targa's Command. It's possible he's going to try, he's trying to pump one of these, either the Lightning Berserker, Double Strike, rather, the Lightning Berserker, or the Abbot of Carol Keep. I, it is a lot of damage. It's actually not a lethal amount of damage here with Fiorentino at 12. Not That's even before the Stubborn Denial that, Nick, that Nicholas is sitting on. I think Levadovich's plan here is to make some attacks here. Fiorent, there's a number of ways that Fiorentino can block where either Osip gets to get rid of the um, Skyrider Elf basically for free if that goes in front of a three-power creature, or he can trade up against the Woodland Wanderer, which is worth a lot to Osip too, but I think it's going to be hard for him to beat the Stubborn Denial in hand. Wow, okay, so here's the swing with the team from Osip, and this is a surprising block from Nicholas, so he put Woodland Wanderer on Lightning Berserker. Oh, actually, and the Skyrider Elf on Zergo Bell Striker. Now, one of Osip's lands actually is a forest, so he can't just make Lightning Berserker a 5-1 and have it trade with the Wanderer. Exactly. This is a pretty sharp block here because Teamer Battle Rage, uh, there's nothing yeah. that good to be done with it. Uh, we get the spot here where Osip is trying to trade up into the Woodland Wanderer and, and Summer Denial is going to be very hard to beat. Yeah, and actually it is a great block. I missed it at first that Osip had the green man. I was thinking, wow, no, Osip will probably just trade up here. But because he couldn't, because of that forest, he had to use the Teamer Battle Rage. We now see Fiorentino gets to Stummer Denial the Battle Rage. So Osip's out of cards and he'll deal Four, five damage to Nicholas. Oh, three. It's just lethal on the way back. And then, yeah, with no cards in hand, Osip's at eight. Nicholas has nine, has eight power exactly in play. Uh, this should be pretty elementary. Just a swing of everything should take care of him. So, yeah, sharp block. <laughs> Looks like going to play out a hardened scales, but, or a servant of the scale, rather. It's a little insurance. Sure, but here, here's the swing for eight. Osip has no blockers, no cards. That one's easy. Game one is in the column for Fiorentino. And the blue card is definitely putting in some work there. Um, Skyrider Elf did some very good work, allowing Fiorentino to go on the aggressive. Helped out with Wooden Launderer, and the Stubborn Denials there were both clutch. All right. Well, you had mentioned before that Osip has a pretty interesting sideboard. You said playing Paolo's List off the start, but a lot of good things going on. Now walk through what, what, he, what he can bring to the matchup. He's got four copies of Roast. That's a pretty standard anti-Siege Rhino measure, but against a deck with Woodland Wanderer, uh, threats like Mana Gorger Hydra, I think that Roast will be coming in this matchup. Four copies of Flame Wake Phoenix. Um, you know, it, it did look like Fiorentino there um, has a little bit of action in the air. He does have his copies of Skyrider Elf, but uh, that may come in here as well, especially with us being able to back up with more removal here. Two copies of Fiery Impulse, two copies of Rending Volley, a little on the narrow side, but they are pretty efficient removal spells against a class of Fiorentino's threats. I don't think this is a matchup for Hooting Mandrills as Fiorentino is able to fight on the ground very effectively. Yeah, now, that was the interesting part. You said this isn't a matchup for Hooting Mandrills. Now, when I look at a 4-4 Trample with Delph, that's to me, always feels like a main deck card. Now, he has three copies in the sideboard, so what are the matchups that are, are 
we, we would see Hooting Mandrills for. I imagine he has four copies of Flame Wake Phoenix and three copies of Hooting Mandrills for matchups where he wants to get a little bit away from the, the combo element of his deck. A lot of decks are vulnerable in the air, and some of the decks don't kill Flame Wake Phoenix very reliably. Hooting Mandrills becomes kind of a replacement for Bacom Immense in spots where you don't want a lot of pump spells. And Hooting Mandrills pairs very well with Flame Wake Phoenix because it has four power, so you can get your Phoenix back. Yeah. Now, on the other side, when you look at the sideboard, I have to say I like what is going on on Fiorentino's side. It looks very straightforward. Three Silk Raps, three Surge of Righteousness. Uh, those all seem excellent for the matchup. Silk Rap, Silk Rap takes care of small creatures. Surge against a red deck, I could sign up for. He has other things. Valor Stance, Disdainful Stroke, Dispel, Evolutionary Leap. But this seems like he should have a great array of weapons for the Atarka Red matchup. Yeah, I love Silk Rap, Surge of Righteousness, and Dispel in this matchup. I'm curious how Fioritino is going to sideboard because there's no cards you point to as, as clearly being inefficient. It's possible on the draw he gets away from cards like Hardened Scales and Dromoka's Command, cards that kind of require him to be on the front foot to be effective. Those two cards definitely have spots of being great in the matchup, but uh, I think with Fiorentino on the draw, he kind of wants to become kind of a generic control deck. Kill some of Osip's stuffs, get the ground settled, and then take over the game with better threats. Maybe cards like Mana Gorge or Hydra, these late-game pump, you know, that, that late-game scaling creature isn't really necessary in the matchup, as he would just rather have that size up front on some of his guys. Yeah, that's another card you can point to, although Mana Gorge or Hydra also has moments of, of being very powerful here. So it, it's tough to be on Fiorentino's side, board, uh, side here sideboarding because he's got eight very powerful cards to bring in and no obvious dead weight cards in his main deck, but I still like his spot very much. All right, well, if you're just joining us, there's nine rounds in the queue today here from Star City Game Standard Open in Philadelphia. Myself, Matthias Hunt, along with Patrick Sullivan, will be bringing you coverage of all nine of them. Uh, you can also follow us, however, on YouTube this weekend. We have a lot of our channel, SCG Live, where we do things outside of the Open Series, such as our Versus Series videos, Premium Archives. We have archives of this event and previous events will go up on YouTube. We also do unboxings and so much more. You can find that on YouTube.com slash Star City Games. It is free to subscribe. And once you're a subscriber, you will be notified when new content is uploaded to the page. And new content's being uploaded to the page very regularly every week. Upload the archives from the last open series and then a lot of content from the website as well. All right. So back to match, the interesting part which we saw out of Fiorentino's deck was Sky Rider Elf. He played one on turn two that game, was able to Dramoka's command it, played another one on turn three. We haven't seen too much of that card, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on it, I, I guess, in general and in the Band Hardened Scales deck. Well, a, a lot of decks are trying to attack in the air now. You see these copies of Flame Wake Phoenix and Lebedovich's deck, and um, Wingmate Rock is one of the marquee threats for a variety of mid-range matchups. I, I think it has something to do with Den Protector, Death Miss Raptor, and Hangerback Walker to a lesser degree making attacking on the ground very challenging in a variety of matchups. So people are uh, trying to diversify a little bit, have some flyers in their deck. Also, you have an interest in being able to block Manus Rider. It's not like Fiorentino is bringing a whole lot of removal spells in his deck, at least game one. So having a, a flyer that can block Manus Rider and trade on curve, it's not hard for Fiorentino to cast it as a 3-3 flyer on the third turn, uh, could help a little bit in those matchups as well. Yeah, it is. In a lot of ways, it is just that Mantis Rider without haste and, or vigilance in the deck, but because it has this extra dimension, I guess, as a 2-2 flyer for two, you know, we did see it be very effective as that last game. And with the fetch land battle land combination in Fiorentino's deck, he does have a copy of Cinderglade that he can get off Wooded Foothills and off of Windswept Heath, so he can cast as a 4-4 flyer on turn four if things break the right way. If he yeah. opens up on two basic lands, he gets white mana somehow off of a random dual land, and then he can fetch for the Cinderglade. Now you have a 4-4 flyer, which is very big for four mana, and now your stubborn denials are also turned on. Yeah, and 4-4 seems to be that really really relevant size for Flyer. You're talking about how Mantis Rider and Wingmate Rock are the premier cards in the sky. Well, those are a 3-3 and a 3-4. So 4-4 four, four Flyer, you know, okay, so his deck can't make it into a 5-5. Five, five. There's no source of black. But 4-4 four, four seems to be really that that critical mass number of where, where it's going to rule these creature battles. Yep, there's probably enough little things going on with Sky Rider Elf in this deck where it, it justifies its slot. Yeah, it has 1-1 one, one counters. I mean, it, I guess I can get, a, get to a 5-5 five, five with hardened scales. Yes. Um, yeah, when we think about Servant to the Scale, Avatar of the Resolute, there's a lot of real, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of synergy with it here. And with Dromoka's Command, you also just want to be casting a creature on turn two, so you can Dromoka's Command as early as possible. Right. We did see that last game, had us a turn two, and that allowed him to Dromoka's Command plus Stubborn Denial on turn three. Yeah. 
So I was talking to Osip yesterday as we get the second game here started. Uh, he was really worried about what his post sideboard games were going to look like in basically every matchup. He was banking on <laughs> winning a lot of game ones and winning a lot of game threes on the play. So he's already up against the wall here as uh, he has lost game one and Fiorentino's got the type of sideboard that Osip feared. A lot of interaction and all of it cheap. All right, well, it's going to be Zer Zergo Bellstriker again on turn one for Osip. But this time he's on the play, so that guy should be good for more damage than he was previously. Last time he got in two with a Zergo before it was taken down by a Dramokas command. Nicholas' side looks like he's just going to ca cast a fetch land for a Canopy Vista. Is there a reason that he needs to do that main phase? No. Just sa save everyone some time, I suppose. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Monastery's history will join Zergo for attack of three on turn two from Osip. I mean, I'll admit, I, I do that on Magic Online all the time. Yeah. So then, I can, then I can F6. Exactly. And Fiorentino gets the IRL F6, basically. Yeah. Yep, but my lands are tapped. It does look like a double copy of Hardened Scales in his hand, which is a lot of setup for him to not impact the board on turn two here. I'll be, I'm interested to see if he can find a window to get those into play. He had the option of make, of getting a basic forest or playing a basic forest last turn to set up hardened scales, but he didn't do that. Looks like he's going to play a second land, and this, this to me smells like a surge of righteousness that he has set up this turn, and we'll see if it's that. Osip playing Abbot of Carol Keep flips a Zergo land, and he doesn't even take... Yeah, can't do it because it's legendary, but he gets to play a third land and play another Monastery Swiss Spear. Here's surge of righteousness to take care of Zergo, but Osip gets in for two, but Nicholas gains two. And for as commanding as it looked like Fiorentino had game one, with the right mixture of spells, or Fiorentino's short one of those two separate denials, that's a winnable game for Osip. And you see the power of this deck when it's on the play here. Uh, it's taking a while for Fiorentino to be able to interact. Even a turn two removal spell is not really keeping up with Osip's board. On Fiorentino's side, he played Hardened Scales and Avatar of the Resolute. Now, he took a pain to take that play that Hardened Scales and hasn't really come to fruition yet. You know, there was no counters for Av for the Avatar to get. On Osip's side, he'll play his second Abbot, get a Mountain, Fiery Impulse away the Avatar, and here comes the team. They all prowessed, so that's seven. Nicholas down to eight. And he is, <laughs> he is looking like he may be dead next turn here. He does not actually have a Sweeper in the deck. And his draw, not, not shabby. Had Surge of Righteousness, Avatar of the Resolute, two copies of his namesake, Hardened Scales, uh, a card that can do a lot of work, but it does not seem like he's had time for that to do anything. It's also just not that much help in games where Osip is going wide. In, in games where Osip has one threat, hard scales can do a lot to ensure that Fiorentino's threat is the bigger and better one. But in spots like this where Osip has four creatures in play to nothing, even if Fiorentino had something that triggered the hardened scales, it's not worth a whole lot. Yeah. Now, I mean, to be fair, this kind of draw from Osip, that's the, it's the draw that I, I'd say I'm very scared of from, out of a Tarka Red. A turn one Zergo, Two Swift Spears, two Abbots. This is a great start for Osip. Mm -hmm. He was able to go wide, and it, it didn't really cost him too many cards to do that. You saw that card like Fiery Impulse do so much work last, last turn. It is basically a Searing Blaze for one mana. Did three damage to a creature, pumped Osip's creatures by three. Well, here's Woodland Wander out of Nicholas. Uh, if Osip has a spell... This is a lethal. He has a lethal attack. Any spell will do it. Lightning Berserker may do it as well. That's going to be dashed in. Yeah, this is lethal. He has to block the Berserker, and he's got six points left over. That'll do it. Yep, this time there's no green mana in play. That Berserker is the most damage. And just for good measure, Osip will show the Fiery Impulse. So he had the spell as well. Osip evens things up one game apiece. <laughs> and he, he killed him with room to spare yeah, there. You can see Osip's body language there at the end there with Fiorentino trying to do the math and Osip kind of giving him those, dude, you're dead by four or five yeah, points. I, <laughs> I like his way where, where we saw that Osip could just let damage happen, but you know he's like to speed things up along. He's like, oh, don't even bother doing the math here. Here, I'll just make it easy. I'll cast this. It, trust me, it's a lot. It's, it's, <laughs> it's you're dead by yeah. a lot. So a quick game two from Levadovich. He evens things up at one game apiece. We'll go to a decider. You mentioned Osip concerned about some of those post-board games. When he's on the play, I'm saying that looked really good on his side. Uh, obviously, on the draw, things can be tougher. I think 
the, the issue that I have with the Tarka Red in the format right now, and I think it's still a good deck, and we're going to see plenty of it over the course of the weekend, I think in post-board games where your opponent has a reasonable mixture of good cyborg cards against you, Dispels, Duresses, Surge of Righteousness, Arash and Cleric, whatever, the typical anti-Tarka Red cards, if they're on the play and have Hangerback Walker and then have any sort of draw involving a sideboard card, I think it's very hard for a Tarka Red to win. We haven't seen Hangerback Walker out of Fiorentino's deck. His deck's obviously built around maximizing that card. He's got Hardened Scales and, and uh, Avatar of the Resolute, so he's really trying to make this card happen. But even without that kind of setup, I, I think that on the draw, beating Hangerback Walker plus anything else is very challenging for a Tarka Red. Yeah, now when we look at... Okay, so a Tarka Red last season, I mean, was one of the top decks of the format. Uh, before rotation. And when I looked at Osub Straw last game, you know, two Swift Spears, two Abbots, that reminded me of last season's Atarka Red. He's playing all, you know, it's, it's this red aggro deck that's mono good cards, and it just came screaming out of the gates there. Now, I want to back up for a second, because you're saying that this deck is, is weaker post-board. Now, the, the difference that Atarka Red has now is that, okay, we're playing cards like Titan Strength, Teamer Battle Rage, Become Immense. We haven't seen any of those these games, but... Is that what makes it weaker post boards that it has this kind of synergy based game plan as opposed, you know, previously those cards were just more good red things? It does get worse in the cyborg games because your opponent's just going to have more copies like Duress and Dispel, cheap removal spells like Murderous Cut to break it up. But I think that Lebedovich does need to keep some of that stuff going on in his deck because it's very hard for Lebedovich to win without those cards once Fiorentino locks up the board. And his deck's. Pretty well equipped to do that. Now, on, on five cards, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, his deck is still very good at gumming up the ground. Yeah, I mean, so five cards uh, is, is going to make it harder. You know, he certainly, I don't think he wants to see anything like hardened scales anymore. It's a powerful effect, but he probably can't afford to lose a card anymore for something like that. They just need to be creatures and lands. Yeah, it's, a, it's also a card that I would have just cut from. Uh, Fiorentino's deck in the first place, I believe. And with Fiorentino going back to his sideboard, you know, he drew two copies of Hardened Scales that game that didn't do anything. Uh, you got to wonder if those cards are not on the bench. And now... Yeah, going down to four, I mean, it's unfortunate here. All right, so it, it, it may be a walkover for Osip at this point, but were it not, you know, you can see sometimes, especially against a deck like, like a Tarka Red, even on a four-card hand, if you have a certain card or maybe pair of cards that are, are somewhat trumps in the matchup, you can still win on a four-card hand. What's he looking for? Two lands, hanger back, walker, surge of righteousness. <laughs> that's, that's a hand that can beat a weak seven-card hand from Lebedovich. Yeah. Would even something like just two hanger backs work? Yeah, yeah. That, I, that, that card is worth so many cards and so much time out of Lebedovich's deck that uh, on a four-card hand, it's still not a lock. Yeah, I, I mean, outside of Hangerback, I, I, I'm not sure if he has another card that can do that kind of work. That is true. Uh, and now, unfortunately for him, a lot of his one-for-one -one removal spells, the good stuff like Silk Wrap, it's not nearly as good because he's just missing the critical mass of cards. But Hangerback Walker still gives him a shot. Yeah, if he starts trading one-for-one -one with Osip because he's starting down four cards, remember, three off the Mulligans and one off Osip being on the draw, I, I think Osip will actually turn into the control deck here. And now it looks like his turn one is a hardened scales. We are now into the match. That feels like a mall to three almost. That depends if it's backed up by hanger back walker. It looks like and it's it not. not. And no. It, listen, Lebedovich definitely breathed a sigh of, of relief there. If yeah. Fiorentino has hanger back walker, it's a game. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a 2 2 immediately. It would have been pumped to a 4 4. This, this could have been a problem. Yes. So I was saying, do not. Assume this is a lock for Lebedovich because Fiorentino is on four cards. It is not. All right, well, uh, Osip had no turn two play, but he did have the turn one Zergo Bell Striker again. It's, it swung in to put Nicholas down to 17. Nicholas took one to play Hardened Scales. Uh, I don't know if Nicholas's draw is going to come together here. He His turn three was just passing. He didn't actually have the third land. Looks like he has Surge of Righteousness in his hand. That's not castable at the moment. I think Jermoka's Command and Surge are two of his cards. So unless he hits a planes i don't think he's playing the game and nonetheless he needs a creature regardless yeah it needs to be if he draws a white source of mana or a hanger back walker he's still playing but it almost needs to be this turn now there's some reprieve o osip seems to be heavy on lands low on threats here you see in his hand he's got fiery impulse it looks like at least two more mountains a copy of roast but zergo going to work and osip just playing out extra lands 
We go to Fiorentino's side. Drew a land predator, and this is a wooded foothills. It can get white, but not until the next turn. Yeah, if the Yavamaya Coast was a basic, then he would be able to fetch for a white source of mana that came to play untapped. As it stands, yeah. he's probably going to have to go Canopy Vista at the end of the turn and then cast something the following turn. Right, Canopy Vista, that's the white source he can fetch off that. On Osip's side, just thinning out his deck, fetches for a copy of Cinderglade. Now, <laughs> Zergo Bellstriker has done six points of damage and looks to get in for another two, putting Fiorentino down to 11 next turn. So this is a small criticism that I have here. If Lebedovich does not need double green, maybe he does, but if he doesn't need double green, I just prefer to fetch for mountains in the spot because it means your windswept, right. it means your windswept Heath can get red mana, and you want as much red mana as possible because you have Lightning Berserker in the deck. Right, so you're planning, there's actually only two Cinder Glades in Atarka Red. Right. So when the two, and there's two Winds of Teeth, so now they only can get Forest. It's a very small thing, and if Osip is feeling like he may need to cast a Tarkus Command and become immense in the same turn, totally fine for him to get the second green source of mana. But if he was just doing it kind of as a reflex thinning of the deck... Of a, hey, it's free, why not get my duels? Right, I, I, I have a preference there to just go get the mountain there so your Windswept Heaths can always get red mana. Yeah, heads up play there. Also, of note, because there's only one Forest and two Windswept Heaths remaining in the deck, there's a chance that he blanks his own Windswept Heaths? Yes. Small considerations, but... Yeah. Uh, and, and again, if Lebedovich feels like he needs double green, potentially, then yeah, there it's are, fine. There fine are to reasons to need two forests. Heads up. So Osip added a Monastery Swift Sphere to the board, so now it joins Zergo. Fiorentino down to nine. <laughs> He'll play a second copy of Hardened Scales and pass the turn. When he gets a creature, it's going to be large, but that's seeming... It like gets too far away. You see two Dramokas commands, a Surge of Righteousness. Osip might just hang back here. If he's flooding out, you know, Fiorentino is very likely to have that card in his hand. Yeah. And very sharp play from Lebedovich. Does not attack. Understands that, he's, that Fiorentino has Surge of Righteousness in his hand, most likely. It's very bad news for Osip if he allows Fiorentino to kill one of Lebedovich's few threats. So if a land-screwed Fiorentino wants to leave up two mana and not do anything, Osip's fine just letting the game look like this, taking some draw steps, trying to find some more threats. And he did just that, and so he went over to Fiorentino's side. He drew Avatar of the Resolute, so now he has a creature. But because he didn't have a fourth land, Fiorentino didn't deploy the creature. He's actually just waiting because he feels a need to keep up something like Dromoka's Command or Surge. As a seventh land for Lebedovich. And o Osip's hand is very heavy on removal. I believe it's five removal spells right now. Yeah, Fiorentino's hand the same way. They just continue to trade back and forth. Can Fiorentino get that fourth creature or land? He can't, but he can get a Servant to the Scale thanks to two Hardened Scales. It's a 3-3. Three, three. That's a start. And actually get, is out of Roast territory already because of that copy of Dromoka's Command in Nicholas's hand. It would make it, thanks to two Hardened Scales, Dromoka's Command is three 1-1 one, one counters. Yeah. It's good stuff. And we may see Ozip. He'll have to use two kill spells. Here's Roast. But he's sitting on oh, so yeah. many removal spells. And with these two Swiss Spears in play, if Fiorentino picks a big fight here, uh, he might just die from all the prowess triggers. I, and if that's what Ozip's counting on. So he played Swiss Spear. He's going to Roast the Servant to the Scale. That represents six power right now, just off that first trigger. If Fiorentino goes for Dromoka's command here, which I he's priced into, but he takes one damage off his own lands to try to Dromoka's command. Now in Osip Fiery Impulses, that pumps again. That's up to eight. And Osip, now ten power in play off his Swift Spears, and that will be a swing for lethal. And there you have it. Osip Levadovich in three takes care of Nicholas Fiorentino. A game that actually... Went longer than I had suspected based on the Nicholas's four-card start. But in the end, Osip, with too many removal spells for Nicholas to make his way through. And definitely a winnable third game for Fiorentino there if he drew Hangerback Walker. Could have definitely right. won. Uh, fortunately for Lebedovich, Fiorentino didn't find.